Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful morning, God, for your presence. It's here in our midst. In your holy name, amen. amen.
This is time to understand you and to know you better, Father. This is the, this is that time. We're the true seekers, Father. You say those who seek you, seek you will find you. You say that you all those who diligently seek you will find you, Father. Well, we're, we're here early Sunday morning. Church isn't enough. We want more than that. So, Father, we're here. And meet us where we're at, Father God. You're the Savior. You're the lover. We just receive. We love you because you first loved us. So we just come to understand what that means for us. The benefits of that, of, of knowing you as God who is love. Teach us, Father. We are children on your lap. Teach us a lesson. Amen and amen. 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 Woohoo! Oh, nice. This is Regina, and that's Alberta. Hi, Alberta. Yeah. Hi, Regina. Hi, Regina. Hi. Hi. Good morning. And that's Carlos, yeah. Carlatos, and Dylan, yeah. and Henry Cantu. <laughs> 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 okay, let's do it. Let's get serious. You ready? Yeah. We're going to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We should Let's look what we should be telling people today. Let's see what our, we are ambassadors we should be, the Bible says we are ambassadors for God. We should be sending this message, right? If I'm an ambassador for a country, because we've been looking at last week, we, I talked about the five different things we love to, I love to teach on. And we talked about mercy and grace. And that's what made me go here, because this is one of the best pictures I can give you uh, of mercy, the difference between mercy and grace. What is the difference between mercy and grace? A lot of people understand we're saved by grace. Um, we're under grace. We're not under the law. We understand these things, but do we even know what grace is? Okay, we know what mercy is. I mean, we know that mercy is not punishing us, right? right. Mm -hmm. Withholding punishment. I mean, if I'm going to be merciful, if I'm a judge, when I, I used to be a criminal, I used to stand before the judge, and I used to, when I go before the judge, I'm hoping for a merciful judge, somebody who's not going to punish me mm -hmm. <laughs> and give me what I deserve, give me the, you know, give me what I got, what I should get. I'm hoping he'll be a little lenient and show some mercy and not beat me so beat me up so hard, right? So that's mercy is to withhold the punishment that I deserve. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus did on the cross. He died for us to receive mercy. He, died, he, he suffered in our place so that we could, so God can be merciful to us. That's the mercy of God, sending his son to die for us. But grace goes one above that, goes better than that, goes above just, if all, if all we get is forgiveness of sins, well, then what's going to happen the next time I sin? God just uh, d declared me not guilty and gave me no charges and said, Dylan, you're innocent, you can go. Right? Mm -hmm. Criminals, stand before a judge gives me mercy, you know, we're, I'm going to drop this case, there's not enough evidence, whatever, I'm just going to give you mercy, you know, whatever, whatever reason he drops the case, I, I'm going free. But what happens when I go out there and I commit another crime? I'm going to be back in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be judged again for my sin. Right. But doesn't the Bible say that there is no condemnation with those in Christ? It says that it's, he's our substitute. Yeah, it's, yeah, it says, yeah, it says in Romans chapter 8, it says that he will not bring a charge against his elect. It is him who justifies. Right. So if you're justified, which means declared not guilty by God, okay, justified, he says that he's not going to bring a charge against you. He equates that no charges with the, the, the being justified, right. the elect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it, Romans chapter 8 says that. It says who will bring a charge against you? God? <laughs> he's the one who justified you. Who's going to condemn you? Mm -hmm. Jesus? He's the one who, who died for you and is now interceding for you. So the whole program is that th that's grace that mm -hmm. goes above and beyond mm -hmm. mercy. Right. Okay, so that's why we need to understand what is the grace of God? What, do we, what does it mean we're not under law, we're under grace? We're under law, you were judged. We're under mm -hmm. law, every time you sinned, you had to do, you had, you had to, it was a const constant uh, a day of atonement where they had, there, there was constant, the Bible says there was a, under, under law, there was a constant reminder of sins, a constant reminder. Look, you sinned again, you're in trouble, you're going to be mm -hmm. condemned, okay? You better get some busy shedding some animal blood. It was a constant thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Constant bloodletting. But the Bible says about Jesus that he died once, that we are sanctified through him once and for all, right? Mm -hmm. He's not dying over and over again. There's no constant bloodshed. Mm -hmm. So this blood of Jesus is, is how we receive mercy and grace, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The, the mercy is, Je let me just say it like this, Jesus died for the sins of the world. It says that in 1 John chapter 2. God, he died for the sins. Of, he d it says he did not just die for your sins. He died for the sins of the world. That means he died for the sins of the world. The sins are forgiven. He died for that. But that's not what saves you. What saves you is you receiving that offer of forgiveness, and thereby God is able to impute his spirit in you through your receiving. Right? He said all those who receive him, he gives the right to become children of God. See, so you receive him, and he gives you that right to become a child of God. Okay? 
and he's ready for heaven, accepted in the beloved, it says. Yeah, it accepted says, in the beloved. It says that in Ephesians chapter 1. It says that having believed, we were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It says in Ephesians. Oh my God, we should look at that. So I can, so I can confirm what, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1 real quick. I want you to see what it's talking about. That's good, Dylan. That's beautiful. See, Dylan, Dylan, you know, I love Dylan. Dylan, he's locking in big time. He's reading the stuff. I'm, I, I, I ordered these books for you guys. Okay, I want to show you. I, I ordered them. They're coming in, and and it, it, and this is what it is. Okay, this is what you're going to be getting. I, it's Andrew Womack. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I heard you talk it's about this, that. It's, it's, it's this book. That. The war is over. God is not mad. So stop struggling with sin and oh, judgment. Beautiful. Okay, and beautiful. I ordered these books for you. I ordered a bunch of them so that I can give them to you guys. Okay. Oh, this is awesome. the book. Thank the war you. is over. God is not yep. mad. So yep. stop struggling Aww. with sin and judgment. You have that, Carlos. Already done. I have that. I have on. I have on Kindles, but and Dylan's, it's good. Like, oh, Dylan's okay. reading it again reading for probably the third time, and I'm, I'm reading. It. It. I have it on my Kindle. See, this is a Kindle. This is a Kindle yes. app, and I go through and I can highlight and stuff oh, on my Kindle so awesome. if you buy it on yeah. Kindle. I we'll get you an actual okay. book. <laughs> but, but I got you a book. I'm so if, one you're, of those. if you're a page turner, <laughs> Ephesians chapter one, you will verse love thirteen. This. Ephesians chapter. I'm going to show you what Dylan is talking about because okay. God, Dylan used to argue with me. He used to fight me with this when I used to try and preach this grace. Ask Carlos. He used to fight with me. Right? It was hard really getting really through really to really Dylan good. because he come out of Pentecostal and they uh -huh. believe you can lose your salvation. And yeah. here I'm preaching, no, you can't. You know, and he's like, oh no, what, no, what about this? What about this? What about this? And I slowly but surely, I showed him what these, these, get him reading these books, what I'm hearing from other people. And I'm showing him, taking him a look at through the scriptures, looking at them in context. And I started to yeah. break him down, break down that wall. That's what we're going to look at today, if I get around to it, is we're going to look at how, G, how Jesus ministered to Nicodemus, which had this wall of law and religion, okay? And then how he talked to the woman at the well. And he yeah. didn't have to break down no wall of religion. And he just, he just admitted, yeah, I'm that Messiah. He, him. He, had, he said, oh, how could this happen? How could this be? And that's usually the religious mindset is how can that, how can that be? How can it? That's what he said. That's what Nicodemus said. Mm -hmm. he, said he said, you must be born again. And he, he, and he says, how can a man go into his mother's womb and be born again? See, it was like right. totally confusion because of all this blockage. He, yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, right? <laughs> but that, that's what religion is. How can that be? How can that, you know, how, can, how is that? You yeah. know, no, and, and it's, but, but with the woman at the well, he didn't have to break down any wall barrier or blockage. All he was able to do was say, hey, go get your husband. And she said, oh, I, I have no husband. He says, oh, yeah, I know you've, you, you've had five husbands. Yeah. <laughs> and the man you're sleeping with now ain't even your husband. He read <laughs> yeah. her like a book, but he kept loving her. He kept talking to her. It was not, it was not judgment. It was not condemnation. Yeah. It was a love factor that she had never experienced before. And it blew her mind. And it turned her into what I'm talking about, an evangelist. What the, yeah. We're ambassadors. We're supposed to turn her into an ambassador who went and told the whole city, come and meet a man who knew everything I've every, everything I ever done. He knew it. Come meet him. Could he be the Messiah? You know, now to these people she's telling that to, they've been judging her, condemning her. Oh, well, we know what you did too, okay? Yeah, yeah. But it was judgment, <laughs> condemnation. She's coming talking about a man who knew everything I did and no judgment and no condemnation. Yeah. Could he be the Messiah? You see what I mean? Yeah. It was a different program. But with Nicodemus, he used religious talk. He said it's a snake was in the desert. You know, right? He used yeah. religion. He used past history of religion, of, 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 of history of Israel. He, he said, how can a man be born again? He said, well, in the same way that, you know, Jesus, he said, the Son of Man must be lifted up in the same way the snake in the desert was lifted up. He uses historical, you know, theological, you know, try to help him understand. If you can understand how a snake could be lifted up in the desert, okay, I mean, a bronze snake could be lifted up in the desert. Yes, you could look at that know. snake and they could be healed. Mm -hmm. Well, then why can't you look at a, a, a Son of Man and be spiritually born, reborn? Oh, you yeah. Know, right? Yeah, yeah, how, how come you can't just, I mean, if you can believe this, yeah. why can't you believe this and just be born again and be saved by mercy and God's grace and just be a new right. creature? Why can't, right. you know, if you can believe that, can you believe this? You see, so religion is a blockage. You know, yeah. super religious people. Yeah. That's why the Pharisees hated him. They said he was of the devil. Yeah. They were the super religious of the day. Mm. That's why Paul was persecuting Christians. And he yeah. thought he was doing God a favor. He thought he was, you know, yeah. right? He thought he was serving God. Yeah. He had a zeal for God, but it was with no knowledge. He didn't know Jesus was the deal. Yeah, right. Right? And so Jesus was able to just reveal himself. I am the Messiah. She said, when the Messiah comes, he will, uh, you know, he'll, you know, he, he'll tell us all things. He'll tell us all things. He said, I, he, I who is speaking to you is he. He just revealed to himself as the Messiah. He didn't do that with Nicodemus. Right. He said, God so loved the world that he sent his son. Kind of like off somebody, somebody who, who's the son guy. He didn't come right out and say, that's me. 
like you did with a woman, right? Right. right? right, right. Because there's a little religious block. And see, here's what you see is when Nicodemus, when, when he, I, I, I can't see Nicodemus having this little conversation with Jesus in private, right? Because that's what's happening. He came at night, had a little conversation with Jesus. That's who he revealed. See, a lot of people don't realize this. God, so they know the scripture, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? Anybody mm -hmm. who believes on him won't perish, but have eternal life. A lot of people don't realize that he, he said that to a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. That was spoken to a Pharisee in a private little conversation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing is that i can't see nicodemus going out and telling all his fellow pharisees yeah, right. hey you know could this guy be the messiah right. he, he defended him a little right? bit he defended i, him I little couldn't bit. see yeah. him doing that but right. the woman didn't have any problem doing that right, right she right. went right to the very people who had been judging her and condemning her okay yeah. for having five that's why she came at noon Right, yes. she came at noon. Right. Oh, that's hot time of the day to go into to go to the Bible says she came that's at noon, and Jesus went to cast. right. Yeah, so so that's the hottest time of the day. The women don't come all dressed up in their little gowns and all this stuff. You know, on a hot day, they come <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah. She came in there in, at noon because she didn't want to be, you know, talked about. She's the gossip of the town. She's had five husbands, and the man she's sleeping with ain't even her husband. I mean, she didn't. She's the gossip of the town. So she comes at noon when nobody's around to get the water, mm -hmm. okay? So that tells me that obviously these people were judging her, condemning her because of her sin in her life, you know, but, but he, all of a sudden here's Jesus who doesn't condemn her. And so she went and told these people who yeah. judge her and condemn her, okay, right? That, that, that makes sense, right? right? Don't you judge people? I mean, don't you look at homosexuals, adulterers, prostitutes? Don't you look at them kind of judgmental of saying, oh, those, those sinners, you know, you don't right. think you're that yeah, bad, right? 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 right, right I mean, right. that's, that's exactly. right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, we got to see it for what it is. I mean, yeah. I like to look at this and see what's really going on here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I see a lot in that, in the fact that she was comfortable telling everybody, this is the Messiah, come meet a man. Could he? He didn't know for sure if he was. He just said, could he be? Yeah. yeah. Come meet a man. Yeah. I can't see Nicodemus doing that with the Pharisees. Right. His, right. His, all his, he says he was a chief Pharisee. He was one of the leaders uh, in the Sanhedrin. Right, right. Nicodemus was. Yeah. I don't see him running back to tell them, hey, could this guy be the Messiah? I mean, oh, he was afraid you know, of getting kicked out of there. I don't see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And why? Because the religious is the blockage. That's why he came at night, because he's afraid of what people think. Yeah. Mm. You know, and even the woman had some of that too. She was she came at noon because she's afraid of what people are gonna say. Yeah. Mm. See, see, are you feeling me? There's a lot of similarities in this situation. Mm. But what what turned her into an evangelist was that Jesus listen, if you know if if you know, if if, if I know everything about you. I mean, every dirty, nasty, ugly mm -hmm. thing, and, and I still love you, mm -hmm. and, and I, I forgive you, yeah. and I'm there for you, and I just, and there's nothing. Now you really feel loved. Yes. But if there's some stuff there that I don't know about, and maybe we're in a relationship or something, and, and there's some stuff there that I don't know about, you're never going to really feel loved because there's this hidden secret stuff going on. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I have a girlfriend and I want to marry her and all this, but, but there, the, I, there's some dark past that she doesn't know about. And I'm right, like, right. as long as she doesn't know, I'm never really going to feel loved. I'm going to think if she really knew me, yeah, she right. wouldn't marry right. me. If right. she really knew me, she wouldn't love me. Right? right. Mm. Well, see, that's why it's important to see that with the woman at the well, that yeah. she understood that he, he, he knew everything about her and he still loved her. You see, and that yeah. turned her into an evangelist. This that kind of love. She and Mary Magdalene. Oh my gosh! So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah. grateful. And yeah. Just, we're, yeah. Yeah, but so what's so important right. is that we come to God to receive. That woman after Jesus after she left after that woman left Jesus, he was left there alone with the woman. I, I, after I mean he was left alone with the woman after she left. The disciples came and said, "Hey," because they went to go get him food. When they came back, they said, oh, "Who gave him food?" Yeah. You know, he seems fa he seems fine. You yeah, know, we, we left. He was famished. He was like, yeah, but when we come back and he looks like he, he ate. He's like fine. He didn't get food. No, he got spiritually fed. Yeah, yeah. By this woman receiving from him, and he knew he was, she was going to go back to the town and tell everybody about him. Mm -hmm. And then the whole town was going to come and says they they believed too after they came, right? So that's how he got fed. He her receiving from him is how he got fed. See, that's, we come to God to receive. You see the same thing in, in, in like you said, Mary. Uh, but the, I think Mary, that's not Mary, that wasn't Mary, Mary and Martha. No. That's a different, that's not Mary Magdalene, is it? No, Mary and Martha. Mary, Mary and Martha? Mary, yeah, Mary is, and Martha is that the is same one. Mary Magdalene? No, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, that's a different Mary, a different right? Mary, There's like three yeah. different Marys. Yeah, there is. Yeah. 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 But, um, but Mary, when she came, uh, uh, Martha was trying to get all the food and everything ready, and Mary was just sitting at the feet of Jesus. 
And yeah. Mary was all stressed and saying, hey, uh, you know, Lord, Lord, I'm doing all the work. You know, she's doing nothing. You can tell yeah. her to come help me. And, and Jesus said, no, she's chosen the better thing. And that's going to be taken away from her. Mm. Yeah. You know, so she was just receiving. Mary, Martha wanted to give and prepare and do, do, do. Mary was just receiving. And he said, that's the better thing. Right. right? Like the woman at the well, which was the better thing. Jesus got fed by feeding her. Mm -hmm. She received from him. And, he, and they came back and said, who fed him? You see, so yeah. we receive yeah. from God. That's why I'm so adamant on the fact that the new old covenant was we got to love God with all our mind, all our soul, all our strength. And the new covenant says that here in his love, it's not that we love God, yeah. not that we love God, but that he loved us. It's key to understand the new covenant message is to receive, 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 be receiver, big receivers. Just say, God is plowing his love, mercy, and grace on me, and I'm just soaking it up. And, and that, if you're really soaking it up, like the woman, what you told the woman, he said, uh, you receive this water, you're going to yeah. overflow. Oh, that's right. You see what he told the woman at the well that? Yeah. Because yeah. that's what happened to her. Mm -hmm. Receiving that love, it overflowed. She went back and told the whole city, come and meet a man. This is why I have a jail ministry, and I love doing this Bible study in here because I know what they, how it works. I receive, and it overflows into Bible study, your ministry, you know, sharing that, you know, sharing that message of God's love for you. Okay, that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And do I say I, we don't love God? No, the Bible says, it goes on after it says that here in his love, not that we love God, but he loved us. He sent his son as a petition. He sent his son to die for our sins. That's what it says, right? We right. should look at it real quick. Mm -hmm. What did we just look at? Ephesians 1. Oh, this one we were looking at. We wanted to look at Ephesians, huh? One. Yeah. I, I'm getting on a roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but we can look at that next if you want. Okay. If you want to see what I'm talking about, because it's important to see what I'm talking about. Right. But So let's so think about 1 John. Right. For, for Ephesians, Ephesians 1 13. Okay, and then we'll and go then to 1 John. We'll look at that. Yeah. Okay, okay, so let's go. Ephesians what? 1 13. Oh my gosh. I, I listen to these recordings. Sometimes I talk so fast. I need to slow down, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. Okay. So what did I say? What did you say? Ephesians 1 13. 1 13. Okay, good. Here it goes. Okay. Um. In him. You also trusted. Do you see that? First, mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 13. In him you also trusted. Right? Mm -hmm. Anybody in here trust Jesus for yes. your salvation? Amen. Huh? Amen. Well, he says, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. When you heard this word, the, when, you, when we go to church, we see a cross up there. Okay? That's symbolic of what Jesus did for us. When you understood that, when you heard that message, something happened. It says, after you heard that word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel, what is the gospel of your salvation? The good news that Jesus died for your sins, that he paid your, your debt, that you don't owe anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. and, and on top of that, God is now, if you believe that, he'll impute his righteousness so you can stay holy before God. Right? Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the gospel, really. Right? Because mm -hmm. that's mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we can come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace. It's both of it. Right? Mm -hmm. So he says, after that, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. See, sealed. Mm -hmm. Some people think that's a mark. Some people think it's like a brand. He branded you. Well, more than likely, I think because later on it says you've been sealed by that Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. It sounds to me like it's more of a seal locked in, like a Ziploc baggie. Yeah. You're locked in. Yeah, it says that in First Peter. It says that you are incorruptible. Yeah. It says you are, it says you are, those who have been born again are now incorruptible, right? Mm -hmm. That you it doesn't fade away. That you have a reservation in heaven. It says that in First Peter. Oh yeah. You see, so that's more like a seal locking you into that right. place, right? Who and he, he goes on to explain that. He says, "Who is who?" Now, see, your guarantee is not what you do. Yes. Your guarantee is not a do. It's a who. Mm -hmm. mm. Who is your guarantee? The Holy Spirit is your guarantee of the inheritance until that redemption of the person's purchased possession to the praise and hit to, to his glory. So all the glory, the Bible says Christ, the Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But it says Christ in you is that hope of glory. So who should get the glory? Jesus. Jesus not me. Yeah. Right? Right, right. So you got a guarantee. What is a guarantee? means it, 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 fail, it, it, it can't fail. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right. It's a guarantee, man. I mean, can you just soak that up for a minute? How many know that your salvation is a guarantee? The Bible says, it says in Hebrews chapter 4, it says that we're saved to the uttermost. 
all those who come to God through Christ because he always lives to intercede for you. Yeah. Saved to the uttermost. Sounds like a guarantee. He calls it eternal redemption elsewhere. That sounds like a guarantee if it's eternal. If your redemption is eternal. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at First John. I want you to see what I'm talking about. What's this? First John? Yeah. Oh my God, this is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, verse eight. Verse eight. Is it two? Eight. Yeah. No, four eight. I'm sorry. Where did I say First John four eight? Sorry, four, eight. sorry, sorry. Four, eight. Okay. I'm going to start with seven. Okay. Now, number one, he says beloved. Mm -hmm. When he says beloved, he's talking to brothers, sisters in Christ, Christians. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, he says children. Same thing. When he's talking about beloved, he's talking about so those who have received the love of God and are in, uh, in a loving relationship with God. Right? Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be Christian. Mm -hmm. You now entered into a relationship with God that cannot be changed. It cannot be altered. That's what it means by imputing his righteousness to you. You now have a right relationship with him. Okay? And he did that for you. He imputed that. He right. created you righteous and truly holy, it says. Right? Mm -hmm. So it says... Uh, beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Mm -hmm. Okay, now think about that. He says God is love. There's a chapter, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. Now, he says that God is love. A lot of us take that, ch that, ch that chapter in 1 Corinthians where it says the love chapter, and we apply that to ourselves. Love is patient, love is kind, it's not proud, keeps yeah. no record of wrongs, right? It always, always sees the best, always hopes the best, always protects. It talks about love, but that's what love is, mm. right? Right, right? And we apply that to ourselves. Like, that's what my love should look like. Yeah. Right. Okay, I always, should always see your best, yeah. not focus on what's wrong with you. <laughs> I shouldn't keep a record. The Bible says we're not supposed to hold grudges, so I shouldn't be uh, yeah. keeping any record of your wrongs, I right? I should always hope your best, okay? I don't, I don't yeah. hope you fail, right? right? I right. hope you're, you're right? Mm. You know, and I should be patient and kind with you. She's messing up, but that's okay. She'll come around. You know, yeah. she, she'll, she'll get it. Think she'll get it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, she, she, that's patient and kind, yeah. right? But, we, but here he says God is love. Yeah. So we need to take that and apply that to God's yeah. love yeah. for me. Yeah. Mm. He always sees my Perfect best. Love. He always Perfect hopes. Love. My, yeah, like you said, if, uh -huh. if love has been perfected in you, you should have no fear of torment. Right. Here, yeah. That's the kind of love that should be perfected in you. I should, yeah. uh, to be perfected, his love perfected in you. I mean, understand yeah. how much God loves me. I, I get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he yeah. says, God is love. Yes. And this is love, verse 9. In, in, in this, the love was manifested toward us that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Mm -hmm. Right? So how do I live? You live through Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm living through Christ. The Bible says Christ is your life. That's mm -hmm. what it means to let your life lived through Christ. Right? Yeah. Okay. Right. In, in, and this is love. Okay, right? Right. Mm -hmm. That you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You love your neighbor the way you love yourself. You love their, right? You love God with everything you have. Does he say that? No. He says, but this here in his love, not yeah. that we love God, yeah, yeah. Right, right. but that he loved yeah. us. Yeah. How many people gloss right over that? Yeah. that I stand, it stands out to me because I understand what the new covenant message is. Yeah. It is not my love for God, it's his love for me. Yeah. Okay, and it goes on to say, look at this, look at verse 19 in the same chapter. 19? Verse 19, okay. watch this, because I'm not taking away from the love of God. I'm just telling you what has to come first. Right, right, right. right. Okay? Because yeah. he says it is not here and it's not because your love for God had to come first in the Old Covenant. He, he said, what's the greatest commandment? You're commanded. He said, what do you say is the greatest commandment? When a guy said, what's the greatest commandment in the law? Now, in the law. In the law. And he said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He, that was the law. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to do it. You were commanded to do it. That's not what it says here. No. Here it says here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And verse 19 says, we love him only because he first loved us. Right? Mm -hmm. So whose love has to come first? We got to be big, big receivers. Like I said about the woman at the well, she was, you know, Jesus received from him, from her. I mean, she received from him and he was famished. He was like, he was like, dude, I'm feeling good right now. I don't need, I don't need food. 
Yeah, right. I just got spiritually fed. Yeah, okay, yeah. I just got a woman to believe that I am the Messiah and go and bring the whole town to me. Yes. Right? Yes. Come on in. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just wants us, he because th the reason is because uh, he's concerned about this outbreak with the COVID. He wants us to have the option of, of, of social distancing. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's why he took okay, us from the small it. one. I get it. Okay. okay. So that, that, it's here from now on? Yeah. And, and this okay. has a heater in here. We don't have to use a little okay, one. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And it's away from the, uh, uh, the music. Yeah. 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 That's good too. It takes away from the music interruption. I don't want to go over what we just went through, but we went through some good stuff, man. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's heavy, right? I mean, are, are you see? Do you see this? People don't teach on this. I know you're. People aren't telling you this stuff. I mean, people, it's hard to get through to people that it is not love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength that you're commanded to do that. That's old covenant. You were, it, it, was a, it was law. It was a commandment. You had to do it. We are so Here he perfect. says it is not that we love him. It is that he, he loves us. With perfect love. Yeah, with perfect love. His love is perfect. He's not holding yeah. anything against you. Yeah. He's a woman caught in the act of adultery. I don't condemn you. Yeah. He's a woman at the well. Oh, I know you've had five husbands, and yeah. the man you're with now <laughs> ain't even your husband. <laughs> I know you're sleeping out yeah. of wedlock. Yeah. Okay, right? It's like she gave up even getting married. I mean, yes. I, yes. I, every, every man I marry, you know, divorces, we divorce. So I'm not even going to get married anymore. Yes. And he, that's why he said, you've had five husbands and a man you're with now ain't even your husband. <laughs> I know what's going on. Yes. But he didn't, he didn't do a condemning. Right. He just right. wanted her to know, I know, I know everything about you. Know and you know what? I got, no, I got nothing but love for you. I, I, I still love you. Right? Yes. That was the woman at the well. Perfect love. Oh, my gosh. And we need to get that. I mean, we need to get that because people are so focused on sin. People think we should be so sin conscious. They want to hear about sin. They want to focus on sin. They sin, sin, sin. All you talk about is grace. How come you don't talk about sin? Well, because if you really understood grace, you wouldn't be sinning as much. Okay, yeah, you, you, right. you, you, lose that, you would lose that appetite because you would really understand how good God is. Because you, you stop. Here's the way it is. When you really turn your face toward God, your back is toward sin. Okay, so yeah. you want to face God. Yeah. That, you don't want to face sin. You want to face God. When you're really toward, facing toward God, the sin factor will diminish. Not perfectly. Right. I'm not talking about sinless perfection. Right. But I'm talking you will definitely sin a whole lot less. Right. Okay, because you're going to be so focused on the goodness of God that, that you're going to be doing good. Look at demons. Yeah. So Jesus is huh? When Jesus walks around demons, they tremble at it. Yeah. Just yeah. the presence of Jesus. That, and, you know, imagine you're facing God. It's more intense. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. What did Paul say what did Paul say in, in, in uh what did Paul say in, in Ephesians chapter four? We looked at this. What did he say when he said if you're lying, tell the truth? Yeah. See he was focused on doing the good, yeah. not the bad. Don't focus on the bad. Focus yeah. on the good. He said if you're lying, tell the truth. If you're stealing, get a job. Be a giver. Yeah. He's focused yeah. on doing the good, not yeah. focused on the yeah. bad. Well, that's good. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. That's that's the message. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to focus on the bad and think we need to talk about that, man. Yeah. Dude, really? I don't know. The Bible, the Bible says Hebrews chapter 10, so we shouldn't even have a sin consciousness. Yeah. Let's look at that real quick. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. What does it say about being sin conscious? You know, yeah. sin, sin, that's sin. Prison. Oh. That's prison. Right? Hebrews 10, verse 1. Now, the law was just a shadow of the good things, okay? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. a shadow, okay? You want the law? Well, you're only getting a shadow of the good stuff we have in the new covenant. That's just a shadow. You want the real deal? You want the real stuff? Okay, I got a hand here. Here's the hand. Okay, that's just a shadow of the hand. Right. Okay, you want the real stuff, or do you just want to go with the shadow? The law is just a shadow, Okay? You want the real deal? The real deal is Jesus' blood. Him sacrificing himself and paying your debt. That's the real deal. Not animal blood. That was just a shadow. That was yes. just a covering. Yes. It only yes. covered. It didn't remove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, isn't that good? Yeah. I'm showing you in Scripture, though. Everything I'm telling you, I'm showing you in Scripture. This is what I preach, but I'm trying to show you in Scripture. It's there. People gloss over it. Just because other people don't expound on it doesn't mean it ain't true. It's true. Yeah. Okay? It's true. I'm trying to tell you what years of, of study, sitting in prison cells and studying the word and getting to know God and then going out there and continuing that. 
I sat in jail cells and I saw the benefit of being alone with God. Being alone with no, nothing but time. Okay, nothing, just sitting alone with nothing but time. I'm waiting for my, my, my date to come up. I'm yeah. Six months, I'm going to get out. But in the meantime, I'm sitting in a jail cell. Okay, so what am I going to do? What should I do? Well, pick up your Bible, study the Word. And I saw the benefit of that. I saw God work miracles in jail. You know, and when I got out, I, I, I saw, the, I, because I saw the benefit of knowing God, spending quality time with Him, I started going hikes, getting along with the Lord. And studying the Word, taking my little Kindle device. I have a Kindle device like this, but it's a little, little Kindle. Mm -hmm. and, and I just, I have all my, all, all my Bibles and, 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 and books and everything, and I just read them on my hikes. And I, 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 I continue in that same thing mm -hmm. because I saw the benefit of that. And that's why I have this knowledge. Yeah. Because, I, you know, people can go through seminary school and they don't know God. They're learning about him. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why people go through seminary school. I heard uh, somebody talking the other day about somebody who, who went through seminary school, and they, they, were through, they went through the, almost the whole schooling, and then at the end they said, this is too much for me. I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a minister. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, it somebody, it's just too much. Yeah. I don't know if I'm really too ready to commit myself to this. You know, they, they, so, right. so they go through all that, but they never really, you know, so they know about God, but they don't really know him. You get to know God through the hard, difficult places, you, you know. Go. Yeah, and, and through application, Amen. not just hearing, Amen. turn the other cheek, turn the other right. cheek. Right. You know, you, you learn by doing what the Bible says to do, not just hearing about it. Mm -hmm. You get out there like with me in jail, I had many opportunities to turn the other cheek, to love those who hate me, yeah. to bless my enemies, you know, yeah. to, good, to, 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 to return evil with good. I had many opportunities to do that. And I, here's the thought. I saw the benefit of it. Amen. It actually turned my enemies into friends. Actually, other people who witnessed me doing that and saw how I do it, they would step up, and when somebody come against me and give me a hard time, somebody out of the blue would just step up and defend me and protect me. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even know this guy. He's just observing me yeah. wow. and seeing how I'm serious yeah. about the word. And I'm, I'm applying it. He sees what I'm doing, going to Bible studies, going to church services. And then he, they, they, a lot of these big, strong guys, they don't know God, but they sure think you do. Yeah. And so they, want, they want some of God in their life. Yeah. They want God to help them with this case. You know, so let me see. Maybe if I just step up and help this guy, maybe yeah. God will take notice. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. know. I, I don't know. Right, I, right. I just know that I'm telling you how many times people have stepped up and defended me when I didn't even know them. Yeah. You know, and all I'm doing, I'm getting into the world and stuff. And I'm just, and people don't like that. Some people don't like it. Right. Some people don't like it. And they come against me. But the ones who do like it, defend me. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm telling you real stuff. He is a defender. Oh my gosh. Sure. God can bring somebody into your life. He says, if you're God before you, nobody could be against you. So yes. bring it. Yes. Go ahead. You know, you'll watch. Sometimes I don't even have to defend myself. And, they, you know, yeah. they, you know. He, he I, does it for you. I told you one, yeah. I, one time I was in Delancey Street and this one guy was giving me a hard time all the time. He'd give me a hard time, hard time, hard time. This is heavy. He'd give me a hard time. And all of a sudden, this, he comes to me later on and I'm serious about the Lord, you know, but yeah. I, for the first year there, I couldn't even have a Bible. I couldn't read a Bible, but I'm so serious about the Lord. Okay. And, and for whatever reason, you know, this is God. He just all of a sudden comes to me and he says, you know, hey, you know what? I had a dream about you last night. Whoa. And that's all he said. And you know, he yes. didn't mess with me no more. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't mess with me no more. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> he didn't explain it and tell me what it was. He just stopped messing with me. God visited him in a dream, man. I don't know yeah. what he said, but he backed up off of me. Yeah. You see, that's how God, it's miracles. Yeah. I see miracles like that. When you see miracles like that, it blows your mind. And you know that God is so real. And it's not, it's not a joke. It's not playtime. He is a good God who, who, who defend the sinner. Right. He defended the woman caught in the act of adultery against the yeah. people who wanted the lost which is said to stone her. She should have been stoned. Yeah. And he defended her. Yeah. Saved her life. Yeah. And then gave her no condemnation. Yes, go sin no more. But listen, I'm not condemning you. No condemnation for me. Go stop your sinning. It doesn't mean, and it's not talking cheerleaders. sinless perfection because you think a woman who is living a life of adultery, you could all of a sudden just stop her sinning all, everything. No, it doesn't. No, no. It's an addiction. Yes. And addictions need to be broken. And yes. it takes time for that. He understands that. Yes. So when he says, sin no, go, go sin no more, he's just saying, change your life. Yes. Don't be a sinner. Right. Be somebody who actually trusts in me. Yes. Right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. <sighs> They become the biggest cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. Yay. I wonder what ministry that woman took on, like the woman at the well. There you go. I bet that woman had a ministry, too. Yeah. 
Just like a woman of the well went out and saved the whole town. They brought the whole town to her. I wonder what that woman did after Jesus did that for her, saved her life. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't even save the woman's life at the well. He didn't save her life. He didn't defend her against the people who wanted to stone her. Mm -hmm. You know? But he did the woman, the woman uh, caught in the adultery. He saved her. Yeah. I wonder what kind of ministry she had. Some people believe that that was Mary Magdalene. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, some so people believe that. Yeah. Some people yeah. believe that that was Mary Magdalene who had seven demons yeah. cast out of her. Yeah. Right? She was the first one at the tomb. Yeah. Yeah. She hung out post after that. She stuck to him like she was the her hair. She washed yeah. his feet with her hair. There's her ministry. She, yeah. if, if, if that was a woman caught in the act of adultery, yeah. that's her ministry. She was the first. People say that women it's shouldn't be there. preachers or yeah. women shouldn't be ministers. She's the first one to preach the risen Christ. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was a woman. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She went and said he's risen. Oh yeah. And the believe and then they didn't even believe her. The disciples yeah. didn't even believe her. Right. Yeah. And God used her to go yeah. and tell everybody. Mm -hmm. Man, we only got 15, 20 minutes left. Okay, let's let's go. Let's go to Ephesians. I want you to see this. Cause, cause, the Hebrews you were in. Huh? Did you finish Hebrews? Oh yeah, let's go to Hebrews. We said Hebrews one. I want you to see this in Hebrews. Thank yeah. you, Dylan. Keep yeah. me on point. Hebrews what? Ten one. Yeah. Ten one? Ten one. Okay. Now, one thing about Hebrews, one thing you got to know about Hebrews is he's talking to Hebrews. He's yeah. talking to Jews. So it's a, yeah. it's a language for them. Yes. Okay. So, it, it, but he's trying to get them where we are today. He's trying to get them to be Christian. Okay. And he's trying to break down the blockage. Like with Nicodemus, there was a blockage. He's still trying to break down blockages for the Jews. Okay. And that's what he's doing. And here, when he says in Hebrews, he's telling them that those, those sacrifices couldn't do what this one does. Mm -hmm. For the verse one. 10 verse 1, for the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things, they can never with those sacrifice, which, sacrifices, animal sacrifices, mm -hmm. which they offered continually year by year. It was, it was a day of atonement. They had to do yeah. this every year. Mm -hmm. They could not make those who approach perfect. Right. He says, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. They would have stopped sacrificing right. if they could be made perfect. Right. They would not need to make any more sacrifices. Are you feeling me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did you know you're made perfect? Yeah. You know in God's eyes you're perfect? Mm. Did, did you know that? You're in Christ and he's perfect. And you're in Christ. God sees you in Christ. Mm -hmm. There's your perfection. Right? Right. So he says those could never... This is why he's saying this. Because those couldn't do what this one does. I'll show you, if you go to, let's go to, go to Hebrews 10, 14. Look what it says. For by this one offering, yes. by Jesus, not those, compete, yeah. not those repeated year after year, this one offering, yeah. he has perfected those who are being sanctified. Yeah. Dude, you've been perfected. Look at verse 12. But this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins, Forever. Forever. Once. Yep. He died once. Done once and he sat down. Yeah. Then he sat down after one time he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 10. Mm. By that will, what will? That he chose to send Jesus to die for your sins. By God's will. And he chose to do this. This is God's doing. Okay. Yeah. By that will, we have yeah. been sanctified through that offering of the body of Jesus once yeah. and for all. Once, once and time. for all. Yep. Okay? No more dead cows. Now let's go to verse 2. This is what I want you to see about consciousness of sin. Verse 10, verse 2. For then would they not have... Okay, so if those could never make you perfect, mm -hmm. would they not have ceased to be offered because of the wor worshipers? Right. Once purged. Purged means washed. Yeah, washed. Yeah. Right? Okay. Once washed would have had no more consciousness right. of sin. But we have been purged once and for all. Yeah. We have been perfected yeah. by this one sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So we should not have any more consciousness of sin. Now, that does not mean you're not aware of sin. That does not mean you don't hate sin. What yes. that means is it doesn't weigh on you. This, yeah. some trans, it's other translations. I should read another translation so you can see what it says. Huh? Yeah, like it did yeah this is good. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10.2. Here it goes. Okay, let's read a few. Let's read some of. Okay, watch this. 
This is the new. This is a new, a new living. Mm -hmm. It says, otherwise, would they have not stopped being offered? Yeah. For the worshippers would have been cleansed once it's see purged, yeah. cleansed, washed, mm -hmm. went once for all, yeah. and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. Yeah. See, that's the sin consciousness. No longer guilt weighing down on you, thinking yeah. God better confess it, or if I don't mention it, God will. You know, I better mention it, or God will. Right? That's a consciousness of sin. That's a fearing some punishment, uh, some, some, because I'm guilty. Yeah. There's no guilt. Yeah. You, there's no condemnation yeah. for you in Christ. None. Yeah. Right? Let me read verse 17, please. Okay. Verse 17. And their sins and iniquities, I will I remember no more. Yeah. Now, where in remission of these, there is no more offering for sin. Having yes. therefore, brethren, the boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Yep. You see the boldness? Yeah. Yeah. I love to land on that. I mean, people gloss right over that. Yeah. But he says we can come boldly through the blood. That's what the blood did for me. I, I'm not, I, I, it's Bible, yeah. but I'm, I, I can't speak for you. You can think what you want. Yeah. But me, I know that I can enter to the very throne room of God. The Bible says we can come into the, the, the throne of yeah. grace, boldly to the throne of grace. That's telling me that I can come right into the throne room of God yeah. any time through the blood. Amen. Yes. And he says boldness. Yes. Head high, chest out. I got a breastplate of righteousness. That means my chest can be out. Yes. Right? Because I've been right to imputed righteousness. It's not mine. I'm not bragging on Henry's righteousness. I'm not righteous in and of myself. Far from it. Okay? I'm right. too much aware of what sin is to even try and... <laughs> oh, I'm so committed. <laughs> oh, I'm so dedicated. Oh, I'm so obedient. Yeah, co -whack. Right. I'm not going to go there. But I do have a righteousness that has been imputed unto me. I right. do put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's my armor against the devil because he wants to beat me up about my sin. He wants yes. to give me a sin yes. consciousness. Yes. Bible yes. says he... he Bible mm. says he's, uh, uh, he's the accuser of the brethren. Yes. He wants me to land on my sin yeah. and be sin conscious. Oh, are you feeling me? Yeah. God don't want you there. He don't want you living there. He says, go, go to Philippians 4.8. This is where your mind should go. Go to Philippians 4.8. We didn't even finish that. There's more there, but let's go to Philippians 4.8. I want you to see where God wants your mind to go. Oh, my God. I get pumped. <laughs> Amen. It's good, though, huh, Dylan? Yeah. You see that? Yeah, it's good. You see what I want you to four, see? What? Philippians 4, 8. 8. Okay. Let's see if you even know this is in your Bible because it's there and I want you to see it because this is what he tells us to do. I can't find it. Where is it? Four, Somebody five. took it out of my Bible. Okay, yeah. let me, look, can, I, look, can I read it? Because, uh, uh, okay. Um, finally, brethren, okay, now, okay, whatever things are true, what's true? I'm saved by the blood. I'm saved to the uttermost. I'm a child of the king. He says all those who receive him, he gives them a right to become children of God. I've received Jesus. I'm a child of God. That's true. Right? He died for my sins. He was punished so I can go free. Right? Wasn't he put on trial and found guilty so I could be found not guilty? We are made perfect by Christ. Right? Yeah. Okay. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, not the bad one. Mm -hmm. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, focus on these things. Mm -hmm. Meditate on these things. This is where your mind should go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where God's it, mind goes. Does that sound like sin conscious? Yes. No. Does that, no, no. that that sounds like God conscious to me? Yeah. Right. We're by Christ. This, that's the opposite of sin consciousness. Yeah. So this is where he wants your mind to go. This is where God's mind goes. Yeah, so this is where God's minds go. When he looks at you, he's not looking at all you sinner. No, he's looking at, hey, he always sees your best. What does he say? Love chapter. Oh, he sees your best. Oh, he's hoping your best. Oh, my gosh. Perfect, perfect love. Yeah. Verse 9. Read that. Verse, uh. Are you lost? Those uh, I lost it. have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Yeah. yeah. And this is Paul writing this. Yes. He said, things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Okay, that's good. He says, what you've learned, what you've received from me, what you've heard, what you've seen in me. I, I'm not preaching. I, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, preaching uh, 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 one of those guys. Uh, uh, um, what, what do they call it? You know, you're. you're, you're no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you're preaching, but you, you don't practice what you preach. Right. Right. Yeah. No, you say what you've seen me. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and God of peace will be with you. 
Yeah. Isn't that great, the God of peace? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peace in the chaos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go to First Corinthians. Or Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Okay, Second Corinthians. Paul had a lot of serious rides. Well, these books. Jesus. Yeah. First, Second Corinthians. Look where, look where he came from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Second yeah, Corinthians see. chapter three. This is powerful. I saw this the other day that this is how he opens up Second Corinthians. Mm. He wrote First Corinthians, kind of correcting those people in the church. Corinthians, for Corinthians, they were all messed up, and he's correcting yes. them. Yes. But if you look at First Corinthians and see how he corrects them, he's constantly reminding them of who they are in Christ. Right. He says, "Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit." These people yeah. are messed up. Yeah, they're defiling oh the Lord's God. table. <laughs> they're making a big That's deal about tongues. Yes. They're, 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 they're making they're, they're making a big deal about spiritual gifts. You know, you know, yes. overemphasizing spiritual gifts. And he goes three chapters, chapter 12, 13, 14, talking about tongues, right? Because they're making a big deal about that. Yeah. And he's, causing he's, he's, division, right? Huh? Causing division. Causing divisions. Yeah, you know, they right. were saying, "Oh, I worship Apollos. Oh, I worship Paul." You know, and they were right, like causing divisions right. in the church. And he's he's, he's just correcting them. But he's yes. constantly telling them, hey, don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and God lives in you? Yes. He's constantly reminding them. That's in 1 Corinthians. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He's constantly reminding them of their identity. Okay. You know, don't do that. That's not you. You know what? We don't roll like that. Okay, that's what, he, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Okay, this is so not you, Dylan. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, you know, we know better. Right? He says we because you're one with Christ. Right, right. It's we know better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So... Look at this, and this is what he says in 2 Corinthians when he, this is, they, they responded well to that letter, and he comes back with this letter, 2 Corinthians, responding, you know, telling them that he was glad that they, that they received that letter well, yeah. because he says, your, your godly sorrow led to repentance, and you received it well. He said, that was a hard letter for me to write, but I wrote, I'm glad I did, because it worked, yeah. right? And, and right here at the very beginning of 2 Corinthians, look, uh, look what he says, verse 3. He says, blessed be the God, of, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulations, that we may also to comfort that 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 we may be able to comfort those. He's chapter one, verse three. Oh, chapter one. It wasn't oh, verse. Oh, yeah. No, what did I say? I was said chapter three. three. I'm sorry. That's okay. One three. Okay. Yeah, one, three. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Blessed be the God of Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. Can we hear that right now? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Can, can, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is your comforter. Okay, mm -hmm. he says, who comforts us in all our tribulations that we may, so that's like, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble by the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. Yes. Can you, and I highlighted comfort, like this comfort is in there four times, five times. Mm. The word comfort is in there five times. Yes. He's yes. trying to get you to understand God is a God of not just comfort, all comfort. Peace in the Not just comfort. And can you just receive that from God? I mean, that's why that we have so many miserable Christians. Yeah, because comfort. they're not receiving comfort from God. They're, yeah, so they're therefore, right. they're not very comfortable. If they were receiving comfort from God, they would be a comfortable Christian. Yeah. And I'd be able to comfort others with yes. the same comfort I've received. Yes, they want to know why. Oh, they're my saying. gosh. There's no peace. Yeah. Yeah. Are you getting yeah. that? Yeah. Are you getting that? Yeah. Yeah. Henry, you were right. I haven't seen this before. I'm telling you. Five times he mentions comfort. Jesus himself said, I will send the Holy Spirit the comforter. He's a comforter, not the discomforter. Yeah. Oh, we hear so much about the Holy Spirit convicting you and making, oh, I felt so miserable. The Holy Spirit was convicting me. And the Bible says that he's there to con convince you that you're a child of God. He says the Holy Spirit there is there to confirm within your spirit that you're a child of God. See, like Paul did, reminding them who they are in Christ. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Paul is doing for the Corinthians what the Holy Spirit is doing for you. He's always reminding you who you are in Christ. Okay? And that is the deterrent to sinning. Yes. yes. That you're a Christian. Yes. And you really are. Mm -hmm. That you're a child of God. And that's not mm -hmm. fitting for you. That's the motivation. Yes. yes. That's what Paul did with 1 Corinthians when he corrected right, them. Right. He constantly Ooh. reminded them of who they are in they Christ. Were dark. They were dark. Isn't that great? He got there. Yeah. Yeah. He's saying you're, you're walking like children of the darkness, but you're children of the light. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the Bible says. It says we've been transferred from the darkness into the kingdom of his, of his son, into the light, right? Mm -hmm. the first Corinthians verse uh, 21. First 1 verse 21. Same chapter. I just saw this now. I'm glad I highlight stuff. I'm glad I highlight stuff because this is how stuff... This is how I can help you. 
this is how I can help you because I highlight stuff and I'm looking at this page and I'm like, yes. wow, look at that. Verse 21. First Corinthians 1 21. Second now, Corinthians 1 21. Oh yeah, sorry. Second Corinthians. Se same page. Second Corinthians 1 20. Thank you, Dylan. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ, right? Who establishes us? Right? Jesus. Yeah. Now he who establishes you within Christ, okay, God, okay, and has anointed us in God. Yeah. You're can you understand you're anointed yeah. in God. He That's your anointed. You're in Christ. Yeah. You're anointed in God. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And so if you're anointed in God, look what he says. Who also, this comes with it, with mm. your anointing in God, with you being in Christ. Oh, this is good. This yeah. comes with it. Yeah. Who also sealed you in that place. Yeah. And given us the spirit in our hearts as a deposit. Yeah. Kind of like what he said elsewhere, it's a guarantee. Remember he said earlier, it's a guarantee. Right, this right, is right. saying it's a deposit. He said that Holy yeah. Spirit is a guarantee. A guarantee yeah. of what? Everything you've got coming. Mm. Your citizenship is in heaven. You're going home. Yeah. You already passed from death into life. You already passed. You, he says, you already, Jesus said, all those who believe on him have already passed from death into life. Mm -hmm. Right? And always will be. Yeah. You, and you'll never come under judgment, he goes on to say. Right? And right. he say that. He says, not only did you already pass from death and life, but you're never coming under judgment. Never. Yeah. And people want to live under judgment. They want to live under condemnation. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, roll with it. That's not and don't preach that in my direction because I ain't hearing all that. The Bible says there is no condemnation. Jesus said there is no judgment. Yeah. Jesus said you will never perish, all those who believe on him. So I'm not going to hell. Okay, so I'm not, I'm, not go, I'm not threatened with hell. You might be. It's okay. Freedom in I'm trying to help you. Yeah. You want to fear hell? You know, go, I mean, unbelievers, they need to fear hell. Because mm -hmm. there is a hell and they're going. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. But believers have a, a living... The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven. You want to see that one? Philippians uh, 3, 1, I think. Our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians. Philippians 3, 20. 3, 20. That's right. Isn't this good? Yes. I mean, I throw these scriptures out, but it's nice that I get to walk them through, walk through, through them, so you can see this, so you can know you don't have to fear hell. He says in First John, he says that we should not be fearing, we should not be, fear, we should not be fearful, fearing torment, right? Total freedom. Yeah. Freedom in Christ. Yes. So somebody, uh, go ahead. You want to read it? Where? Three twenty. I want you to see this for yourself. How does your say it? You look for the Savior. Conversation. Our conversation. Oh, that's a King James? King James, yeah. yeah. King James. Our, our conversation? Life. Conversation yeah. is I old English for life. Yeah, citizenship. that's what I have. Yeah. Says, for our conversation is okay. in heaven. Yeah, I have the New King James. It says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. See, see, we should be waiting expectantly, looking yes. forward to his return. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He says that in Hebrews, where's that in Hebrews, where he says that all those who wait eagerly for him. Yeah. Right? Mm. Do, do you know what that is? I can look it up. Probably toward the end, probably chapter 12 or 13. I have chapter, I think it's chapter 9. I'm looking, oh, okay, let me see. Oh, yes, 9, toward the end of the uh, chapter. What verse is it? Hebrews? Hebrews 9, 26, or 9, 9 27. 26. Yeah, but 9, 28. 28, yeah. 9, 28. Hebrews 9, 28. Okay, let's go to 24. This is good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> See, this is what Hebrews is doing. It's trying to break you away from this stuff. that They were still living under the law, thinking you still have to be circumcised. So you still have to make yes. the sacrifices. Yeah. And they're still thinking that they still need all that stuff. They, they started to believe in Jesus, but they want to bring this with them. Mm -hmm. they, they want Jesus and this. They're, they're a mixture. And he says, no, you need to make a clean break. Look what he says. Verse 24. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands. You see that? 924. Mm -hmm. okay. Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself. Yes. Now to appear in the presence of God for, for us. us. Torn the bit. Okay, yes. see, that's what's going on with you. Yeah. This is what's happening for you. Yes. Jesus is inter is, that's why he says elsewhere that he, we're saved to the uttermost, all those who come to God through Christ, because he always lives to intercede for us. Mm -hmm. See, he's, he's appearing before God for you. That's why God can look at you and see perfect, because he is. And he's, he's appearing before God for you. Yeah. 
Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nor yet that he should offer himself often. Okay, so he right. didn't he didn't offer he didn't die several bunch of times. Right. Right. As the high priest right. enters into the holy place every year with blood of another, yeah. for then he would have had to suffer often yeah. since the foundation of the world. Yeah. But now once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin, period, yeah. by the sacrifice of himself. Your Done. sin has been put away. Done. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's amazing all the different ways Paul brings Christ's suffering. And, and yeah. Really That's what he said. Yeah. That's why he said, he said, I only preach Christ and him crucified. It was yeah. all about the suffering of yeah. Christ. Yeah. It's, if you understand how much Jesus suffered for you, you would start to appreciate what, what you have because of it. Right, right. right. Do you know how much he suffered? I mean, come on. He didn't just, yeah. you know, he didn't die for the good people. Right, uh, right. Can I, I got to say this for a minute. Please, take a <laughs> I was in the Bible study class years ago, and it was a round table like this, and I asked him, I, 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 and God told me this question. I said, if an angel of the Lord came to you at night and told you, I'm going to take you, I'm going to show you the crucifixion, you're going to be there right up on everything from the time they take him to the time he's buried, and you can't leave. Would you wow. go or stay here and reap the benefits of what he did? Wow. And people had a hard time answering that. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know, think about maybe we right next week, might have an answer, but yeah, would you go? Wow. And wow. you can't leave. And wow. we're talking about crucifixion, all of us right here, yeah, right, right now. Yeah. It was this that heaven. Yeah. What, what the bottom line is, 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 is would God send his son to go through all that yeah. to right. save you? Yeah. And, and it's not enough. You have to do something. Right. You have to add to that. If he, he wouldn't send his son to suffer, go through all that hell on earth to save you, but, but it's not enough. It's not going to do the work. It's not going to do the trick. Wow. If, Henry it, it had, did. if Henry had a son, it did, it did would he put his son, punish his son if it wasn't going to fix the problem? If it was only a down, if it was only going to fix part of the problem, he probably wouldn't go through all the trouble of putting his son in harm's way. Yeah, right. Let me put it like this to help you understand. Okay, let me do like what he's saying. Okay, if, if, if I, my son is in a car and they're driving down the street and the, the, the kid had some drugs in the car, the kid was driving the car, he's a younger kid, you know, and he had like some drugs in the car. And the police pull him over and they find the drugs in the car, right? And, and you know, he's going to go to jail for this, you know? Yeah. So my son comes to me and he says, Dad, listen, he's a good looking kid. He's too young to go to jail. He's going to he's going to go to jail. Dad, let me take the rap. I can handle myself. I'm a tough guy, football player. I can handle, let me take the rap. Let me let me let me go in his place, okay? Now, <laughs> most father would say, "Are you crazy? That is not going to happen." Okay? But if I even would consider it to let him take his place and say the drugs were his. Okay? Cuz they were his, yeah. but he wants to take the rap. Okay? Now, would I even let my son do that? Take his place? If it didn't save the kid, right, right, right. Would I let my son take the rap yeah. if there was some any chance that they could say, yeah, well, he has it was in his car, so mm -hmm. you're kind of both at fault, okay? If there was any, if there was, yeah. if it didn't right. save him completely, completely yeah. I wouldn't let yeah. my son yeah. do crazy. it. Crazy. Right. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. 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 And that's the way it is with that's God. Right. He would not send his Jesus to go through all that if it didn't save you completely. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 that he saves us to the uttermost. Yeah. It is completely. The Bible yeah. says you are complete in Christ. Yeah. You're saved completely, dude. Yeah. Henry, I got to put pressure on you, man. As a teacher of this class and all that, would you, could you have a seeing that crucifixion up close and personal? With everything you've done and been through. And, and, and really... Think about it. You've been through so much. Could you handle seeing that? I don't think, I don't, man, that's a hard question. Yeah. If I was a Jew in the day, it would be hard unless I was like well, with the, unless right I was now, one of the disciples who actually spent time with yeah. Jesus and actually yeah. witnessed some of the miracles. I don't know how I would perceive that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. because the way the Jews believed back then, uh -huh. they believed that this wouldn't be happening to Jesus if. If he was, if he was a, if it's, if it's a child of God, God yeah. wouldn't let it happen. Yeah, right. Why is he suffering if he was really who he says he is? If he really was a God, right? It's not, I mean, it says that. It says that in, uh, mm -hmm. it says that in, in, in uh, uh, what, um, Isaiah 53. It oh, says yeah. that they thought he was dying for his sins. You want to see it? Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Isaiah 53? Yeah. 
Isaiah 53. I think I'd pass away just from all the grief. Yeah. yeah. But but he says. They said they smote their breasts. They smote their chests, you know, and wow, grief. Really? Yeah, in, in the in math in one of the gospel wow. accounts. Isaiah 53. Yeah. It's difficult. I think for you to witness. Yeah. For any of us to witness. That's why I tell you about that cross on the Lord Jesus Christ in Texas. Look it up. Uh, really? 1940 cross. That's all Dylan about. He knows about it. Okay. Okay. Um, Dylan, where is it? Do you see it? Oh, you know what? I don't know where that is. Uh, it, what, I can look it up on my phone. I mean, 53 I'm looking at sin bearing service. The sin bearing that's what it says at the top of my Hold on, hold on, okay. The sin bearing service. Isaiah fifty three. They thought it was for his sin that he was crucified. He made grave, oh, grave. Right, 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 right. Fifty three five, let's see. Ooh, look at verse nine in there. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. He was he taken didn't deserve away. It. That's Isaiah 53 yeah. 9. He took it but didn't deserve Dylan, it. Dylan, I can't find it. It's just uh, amazing. Heavy. He, this uh, let me see. Yeah. No beauty. Yeah, okay. Right. okay, it says he was despised, rejected, and searched from where he despised him, teached him not surely, took up our sin, he was considered stricken by other. Yeah. Okay, here it is, verse 4. Okay. Verse 4. It says, Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, spent by him, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Mm. I don't know where that is. There was one that said, it's, it's somewhere in here it says that, uh, that we thought it was our sin, they thought it was his sin. Maybe that was it, maybe that was four. Hmm. Right, Dylan? Let me look it up. Let me look it up. And didn't Pontius Pilate try to save his life because he really didn't believe that Jesus was right, guilty? Right. I, I he had that. him beaten to a pulp, oh. hoping that that would that would satisfy the Jews. Yeah, but it didn't. No. Yeah, he even tried to. So he got both. He got beaten to a pulp and he hung on a cross. He even brought Barabbas he got, out. Yeah. He, he even brought Barabbas out to yeah. try and get him released. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. determined to get him released. His wife came to him and said, "I had a dream." Yes, right? Isaiah 53 mm -hmm. 4. You just read it. Huh? Isaiah 53 he 4. Got yeah, that's beaten it. Beaten to a pulp and crucified. Huh? He got beaten to a pulp and crucified. Oh, yeah. He, he, he was both. whipped, you know, he whipped a crown of thorns on his head, pushed down on his head. He when got I the saw word. the uh, Passion of the Christ, women yeah. ran out of the theater. They yes. couldn't help. Yeah. They ran out of the theater. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, and I've only seen it once. I got to DVD, but it's, that's difficult to watch. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this was heavy, man, for us. For our sin. So we can make it to heaven. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, think about it. But, but think about it. That's what saves you. Yes. That's what saves you. Yes. So, are you saved or not? I mean, yeah, we are. Messiah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We just got to receive that and, and, and trust God to, you know, whatever. You know, sanctification process needs to take on in my life. The Bible says He will work in you to will and to do what pleases Him, and I gotta trust that He's doing that. Yeah. He says He who begun that work in you, He will see it to completion. Yeah. So I need to trust what the Bible says. And and it, the problem is people take these scriptures out of context and say, well, you gotta confess to stay forgiven, or they say you gotta you gotta you gotta repent, you gotta feel sorry, you gotta feel bad if you sin, you gotta feel terrible about yeah. it. You know, but the Bible says the goodness of God leads to repentance. Okay, yeah. so if there's any repentance, it's got to come from what something God is doing in me. It's not something I got to make happen. Right. You know, I, I used to believe that because people tell you you got to you got to repent, you got to repent. People are big on that, you know. And, and the problem with that is, that I used to I used to try and make myself feel sorry. I thought I thought I was supposed to feel bad about it. And a lot of the things I did, selling drugs, the life I lived, come, becoming a Christian, new Christian, I liked that stuff. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You know, how am I supposed to make myself feel bad about something I like? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's an addiction. Right. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah. of us have addictions. We have bad habits and it's hard to break. And we need God's help with that. It's not something I do to get it. Yeah. It's something he does for you, through you. It's it, God has to do this, mm -hmm. you know. You think you got to do That's why the Bible still calls it the works of the law, but it calls it the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's got to be fruit. It's got to be something coming from God to me, through me, 
to others and, and for to myself. Right, right. I all can right. love myself because God loves me. Mm-hmm. Right. I can be, yeah. Mm-hmm. Help me, Lord, all day long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a place. There is a right. place for godly sorrow. The Bible says, "Don't grieve yeah. the Holy Spirit." So there is a place for right. gr- where we right. grieve the Holy Spirit. You're not comfortable with sin, right. you know. But anybody can get caught up in some form of uh, uh, of addiction, and, and don't think that because you're still struggling with some, you know, eating habit, temperamental, you know, right. some some lusting issues, you know, don't think that because you're still having trouble in that area that that you know, like they, they take a scripture out that say if you willfully sin, you know, you yeah. could. You, you, right? You, you throw yeah. God, you, you, you're done. Right, right. Yeah, well then, okay, so if that was willful, if that's talking about willful sin, well then we all willfully sin. I mean, we do, won't, I mean you, you never sin willfully. You never it's choose perfect. to do something you know you shouldn't do. Yeah. You never do that. Right, right. We all sin willfully. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's yeah. not, that willful yeah. sin is to, to making it sound like you lose your salvation because you willfully sin. Right. That's that, nobody you. could be saved. Yeah, that's, that's talking about rejecting Jesus, the willful sin. Yeah. If you look at Hebrews, the only sin it actually really talks about, about sin, it's unbelief. It's unbelief. Right. It, in the book of Hebrews, the sin it is discussing all the, throughout the book is the sin of unbelief. Mm-hmm. So when it talks about unable to come back to repentance, it's impossible to come back to repentance. When it talks about willful sin, it's talking about going, going back to the... He's dealing yeah, with those system. sacrifices, yeah, the, old the old covenant yeah. mentality. And that's what he's dealing with. He's trying to break him free from that and just receiving Jesus as the only way. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. You got to come through Jesus. You got to, that, that's why he says in there, we can come in, we can come in the holiest through the blood. Mm-hmm. And he says boldly. He's offering to have a boldness to come to God. I don't come groveling in the dust, begging for mercy, crying for, you know, no, I just understand, you know, hey, I'm a work in progress, yeah. you know, and God loves me. And, and I'm accepted in the beloved, okay, and, I, and, 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 and I'm in the process of sanctification, and, and it's a beautiful thing, but the more I know about who I am, the more I'll live out my, my identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm big on identity. That's why I'm big on, 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 on helping you see, what, you know, what the, who you are in Christ. Mm-hmm. Because if you, if you know yourself to be a priest, you'll act like a priest. Mm-hmm. But if you say, I'm no priest, you're never going to act like one. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to act like a poor old sinner saved by grace. You know, no, by. no, I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm a royalty. I'm a king and a priest. I'm anointed. I am the beloved. I, oh, my boy. Hmm. I got a new heart. I'm a new creature. Yeah, it gives us motivation. Yeah, that's the motivation to live like it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Woohoo. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to stay clean if you're already clean, right? Right. As opposed to trying to get clean when you're just some filthy, rotten old sinner, trying to get clean. If you realize that God yes. already cleans you up, you're already forgiven of all sin, cleansed of all unrighteousness. Yes. You have God's righteousness imputed unto you. You're created righteous and truly holy. You're complete in Christ. If you see yourself that way, it's a lot easier to stay clean yes. if you're already clean. Right. Isn't that right. good? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. That's how I roll. And it really works for me. I mean, it keeps me keyed into what's important, what really matters. Mm. You know. Yeah. And I'm using scripture. You see how I throw scriptures out there to show you, to show you citizenship is in heaven. It's, it's not our love for him. It's his love for us. We only love him because he first loved us. Right? Mm -hmm. That we're sealed by the Holy Spirit until that day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Locked in. You know, you see how the scriptures I point them out? I'm letting you see them for yourself. So, you know, put them all together. Juggle those around. And if you're really holding on to that, when people throw this other stuff out, it's not going to compute. Right. When people throw something that takes away from that, how do you take away from this? Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. You can't. Mm -hmm. I got to ask you. Does anybody think about trying to attempt to try to answer that question now, like a yes or no, or is this too difficult? Uh, would you go? Would I go? Would you go? If witness? Okay. And if, if what? Choice, what was if, the if, choice? If, 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 if uh, Andy came to you and took the crucifixion and showed you everything, right. and you can't, you have to say until it's all done. Right. Would you go? 